Hello my friends and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood where last time we had possible suicide mission of let's go assassinate Xenos while we have the opportunity. Yeah, that didn't really go so well, but uh, at least we have roused the spirits of the villagers here who have finally stood up for themselves. Good for them. So now we get to talk to my our friends. So, um, how did you get here? Like, did you run in the confederacy? Did they make you pay the ruby tide and all that good crap? Um, how is Tataru? Why are you even over here all of a sudden? What has changed? Well, he... That's not really wrong, so... <laughs> yeah, okay, you, you, you do some brother-sister bonding stuff. To totally tell him, you know, about how you took on like a dozen cogent by yourself and yeah. That whoops, we just summoned a primal in. Oh god, I had to deal with stupid idiot pirates again. So we gotta find him again up there. Ugh. Hopefully he's got like a scent trail or some kind of pager or something up there. Well, I'm the main character. Well, sort of. Kind of. So yes, you, you knew I will absolutely be joining you in the search. Hello, Lisa and this lady. How are you doing? You know what, Lisa? You bring up some very good points, and we will address some of those points as we actually get to them. Uh, for reference, Fordola is several years younger than th the two of them, so she's kind of got a point, but it's also one of the things where that age gap it is enough that it causes some, gen uh, you know, different generational strife. Can't think of the right term for it, but... Can we have a group hug? Oh, she knows that. She's the one who told you that. N not that I think they're incapable. Should we be really be leaving a bunch of teenagers, a bunch of foreign teenagers, I might add, to handle all this? <laughs> Get some sushi. So 
We got fed both lunch and dinner. How sweet. I would expect no less of Bahamut's conqueror. Prepare the airship. His radiance will not object. We have fulfilled our obligations here. I would see this prize for myself. Do you understand why I appointed you to act in my stead? You, whose only accomplishment was to whisper the right words in the right ear. Because of your petty hatreds, they render you the perfect instrument to bleed your kinsmen of hope. To make an example of Doma, such as was ordered. Listen well. If you yield Doma to the rebels, you will not be given another chance to beg forgiveness. Do your duty, now. Or die with the rest of them. What? You could have killed them all when you had the chance and you chose to walk off. Are you all right, my lady? That was uncalled for. Oh! Damn! They say your Eorzean is helping the rebels. I want her dead. I want her friends dead. I want the heads of everyone she knows and loves mounted on the castle walls. You mean... You mean I can finally go after her? <laughs> I've been waiting for this chance. I promise you, my lady, she won't escape this time. Not this time, oh no. Wow, lots of plot developments coming up where I can't see them today. Aye, this is the place. When his shade was banished, you swore to leave this life behind. And yet here you are. Well, hello there. Yet, if this be the work of the eyes, what choice do you have but to end it? <laughs> or so the boy would say, damn you, Alphano. So, 
There's a bunch to unpack there. One of which is a small blurb at that scene in Doma Castle, which we will be coming back to later. So I just want you to, to keep that scene in mind, because there's a particular part about it that's going to be relevant later that I am going to bring up. Second, um, Estidian is back. Yeah, he has not left the narrative, despite, you know, kind of just walking off of Ishgar with a bouquet of flowers last time, well, we, as the players anyway, saw him. Now, if you might have noticed, he is spotting a fancy new set of armor. Yeah, it will be eventually revealed in supplementary info, even though the event actually happens before this point, because obviously he's wearing it. That armor is a gift from Hreisvelgar to him, and it is blessed with Ratatoskr's power, like before she died. And I'm going to leave a link to the description to the story. Uh, leave a link to the story in the description. English is really hard because it's a beautiful, it's the story I love and I go back to read it like once a month because it just fascinates me so. And it does answer the question I had been wondering for quite some time is that did he and Tracefogar ever and make any sort of, you know, amends or you know, speak to each other once again, and the answer is obviously yes, and um, the really funny thing is the armor actually has a name, it's literally named Iceheart, and no, I am not making that up, that, that is 100% completely legit, I swear, and I find it kind of hilarious that he is now wearing literal plot armor. Um, what this armor that has been blessed by Ratatoskr's power is capable of doing, even though it, you know, it's been kept in pristine condition for a thousand years, that to this day remains to be seen. But I just have a really good time calling it the literal plot armor, because I really want to see what is utterly so special about it that she would grant her power to them, you know, to, to the, the Dragoons of the past, and especially this one set he's given that is like the never been worn super powered special edition or something. Okay, you be good, okay? You be good. So, yeah, as said, we have to go a bit of the long way to get around to the step. Alright, so back in Isari, we do need to make a quick pick, pick, quick a pit stop because, well, in universe, we don't need to, we need to know where to go. I don't know why English is so hard for me to, to, speak right now. But thank you for waiting for me, girl. I almost forgot we can fly in this zone. Because we sure have not explored half of Yangsha yet. This is, So far, the Ruby Sea is the only zone that we've actually quote-unquote finished before we've gone on to the next. And kind of irritated in this expansion by that because we've gone through three of the four zones right now where they've cut us off halfway through and be like nope nope you gotta go somewhere else so if you came to this cave before this point it the whole thing would just be covered up in rocks uh, you could see the zone marker line obviously but you you just couldn't do anything with it all it's just arbitrarily gated
I remember the emptiness, vast and endless. The Azim Steppe, home to countless roaming tribes. A sacred land, watched over by elder gods. Here, we would find Doma's salvation. With the wind at our backs, we walked on, in search of hope, in search of him. So hooray, new zone, and I have to say I like the topography of the area because everything is just so wide and open and you can see from moms and I kind of appreciate that from, from an aesthetic standpoint. But that being said, this is my least favorite part of the entirety of Stormblood. I am not happy with this place at all. Um, the narrative has a lot of problems. Would you hit the button and talk to her? Thank you. Sorry, dialogue just got stuck there again. So a bit of racial segregation, good to know. But yeah, we'll 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 discuss some of the problems as we get to them. And I know this part of the game is beloved by a lot of the fandom. And I'm gonna tell you that while I'm not going to knock people's personal opinions, but as far as the storytelling and the pacing of this place goes, it's terrible. It's it's terrible. Um, at least in comparison to the rest of everything. I had the least amount of fun doing this whole part and it just dragged on and on and on and yeah, I just had no fun with it. So you're probably going to hear a bit of cynicism from me. Um, please don't take it personal. If you like this place, you like this place, you do you. I'm just here to explain why I think from a nervous standpoint, it kind of sucks. Now, this begs the question, Lise, have you seen Azela before? I mean, you probably have because there's at least a small handful of them in Charlayan. Um, if Lise has come across them, that we don't know. Um, I think it's safe to say she might be at least familiar with them. Yeah, didn't we not just go through this? Like, wasn't she literally just saying that Domans don't really come into this area? <sighs> I mean, I suppose they want to make this uh, a bit more clear to the player, but it just seems kind of an odd placement of the dialogue here. Like, this conversation should have taken place before we crossed the border over, you know? Well, maybe there's nothing here that the Empire wants. Yeah, 
That's good. I'm glad you're open to this learning about this lease. Okay. Well, at least if most of the people here are Zayla, it's not gonna be that hard to find one single Doman man, you know? <laughs> like, even if we don't necessarily have a sketch of him, um, at least we know who to look for, or at least who to make our inquiries about. Being like, hey, yeah, we're looking for a Doman dude, have you seen him? Okay, thanks, bye. Okay. So yeah, of course, we, what, what we have here in Reunion, and we'll get to the Aether Eight in just a second, is a trading post of sorts, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay. Let's just walk away from that conversation right there. How convenient that they have an Aetherite over here. Man, these people really care about selling their foodstuffs. I mean, I'm grateful that I will never go without lunch as long as I'm in this area, but... Uh, hi? Okay, so we're looking for someone of a particular tribe. Okay, like, um, alright. Seems kind of weird. Um, you, Gary, maybe you should, you could be of a little help here. Um, I don't know if she's there, are, any of them are actually around. Let me take a quick look. Um, you seem to know that there are more than 50 tribes in this area. You, might you educate me a little bit about them? Um, I mean, you're not a Zela, but you seem to know at least more than I do about this. I don't think anyone else loaded on the map, but I just want to take a quick look around just to make sure. Oh, look, they even have striking dummies. Must come in handy for testing out the weapons from the battle suppliers and stuff like that. Be like, hey, hey, my swords and sticks are really cool. Here, have this dummy to try to test them out on, huh? Alright, so we gotta figure out how the friggin' hell to use my damn PS4 chat box. Alright. <laughs> Can you tell I do this often? Okay. Oh, damn it. I have to put it in say chat because it's in party by default. Okay, like three minutes later of having to futz with the controls to figure all this out again. Um, it's just because I don't type on my PS4. I usually play on my PC and I don't have a keyboard plugged into my PS4. And I... Dude, like, for real, like, okay, I'm a foreigner in these places, I don't know that. Jeez, holy crap. <sighs> don't need to be rude. But yeah, um, I am fully aware that there is 
PlayStation app on your phone that you can use to type into chat, and I have used that in the past, but I've run into issues of, uh, yeah, the virtual keyboard just getting stuck on the screen, and that's not cool either. No, okay, but that doesn't help me. The frigging heck does a mall look like? Oh, hi! Alright, so you wear the pinkish outfit stuff. Mm, okay. I have been educated. I'm sorry to have rudely interrupted your conversation, though. Um, okay. So she broke. But she can go fetch quest for some more stuff to, to, to pay the difference. Cool. Uh, the life of an adventurer. Yeah, if it gets me out of here faster, I have a new friend to find. Of this place. At least I don't think. Yeah, sorry, I just ran over all your baskets. Mine apologies. Oh, hi, mysterious tree like beings again. I have seen your ilk before. I find it kind of funny that you walk on your hands and have really itty bitty tiny legs. Um, those things must go numb after a while. I mean, as a short person whose feet never touch the floor, if I just leave them dangling, they will fall asleep after a few minutes. I'm usually, I'm usually sitting cross-legged on my chair, by the way, or otherwise have them somehow folded underneath me, although I do have to swap them often. Because, yeah, it goes numb from, obviously, me sitting on it, too. In the life of a short person, you guys. Alright, back to reunion we go. Hopefully no one else has taken the goods. Before we ride back. Else, yeah, she's in for a bad day. No fair. You got back before I did. Okay, so uh, under impression divine intervention is going on here. Okay. Hey. How goes the search? 
Any luck? Well, come up to us instead of shouting at us from halfway across town, you sillies. <laughs> what fortune to meet a friend of the young master! Well met, Cyrena. If you have an inkling as to the current whereabouts of Lord Hien, we should be most grateful for your assistance. Oh, please! It is I who should be grateful. Hold! What is this? I came first, you second! Know you to whom you speak? All people of the steppe should! Or have you fought so much that you have forgotten the face of your superiors? Superiors? I spit on your superiority, little prince! Twisted and mad as sand devils your kind are! So are we just gonna have a staring contest? Those two don't seem to like each other very much. Those boys are of the Oronir and Dothal, the two strongest tribes. The children of Azim are destined to rule, so they declare to all who will listen. Their word is law, for now. Grand, flamboyant fighters, but deadly, very deadly. He prances as a horse, as do his brothers after their many recent victories. The Undying Ones, too, are strong, fearless, and vicious. They often reigned in the past. Now, they are sorely tested. Ah, the master of the markets. He is Castile. To fight in reunion is forbidden, and to break the peace is to be banished forever. This he says without words, for words are lies to the Castile. They do not speak. That's... interesting. And all these different tribes share the same lands, do they? No wonder it's tense. I shall look for you on the field at the Nardum. Mark my words! <laughs> As shall I! Mayhap I shall take eleven more Dothar heads to make a dozen with yours! I, I look forward to the day! Their dispute will be settled at the Nardum? A great battle held on the final day of the Sahan San. During this time, all bonds of hierarchy are broken. All Zela are equal and free to prepare for the fight. The tribe which triumphs in the Nardum rules until the next Sahan San. Okay. Which in these lands is now. Ah, so that is what they call the custom. I presume your tribe will also be taking part? Not all seek the Dawn Throne. Some are satisfied with their lot. Others, like the Kestir, have reason to remain neutral. The Mole are lambs among wolves. Long were we content to remain apart and live quietly, but... But what? Never mind that. You see Kien, yes? I know where he may be. Well, that was a nice little excursion and some education for some of the things we'll be seeing around here. So, thank you, Serena, for 
your knowledge. Uh, clearly she can tell we're outsiders and can definitely do with understanding the customs of this area. And by knowing, you know, who not to piss off, basically. But we're gonna have to put off our meeting with Hien until next time. So thank you for watching, my friends, and I shall see you then.